Good morning and welcome to this today's virtual bridge ses session hosted in association with Jiskin College Development Network. Today we are delighted to present Gillian Auld who is going to speak on Escape OneNote. Now Gillian is from the South Eastern Regional College and despite the name of the title this is not how to escape using OneNote but how to use OneNote for a very engaging way and, and that we can use it for escape rooms. So Microsoft OneNote is a collaborative tool and it can be used as a foundation for virtual interactive activities such as escape rooms. So I will, if you don't mind, hand over to Gillian and Gillian can take us through Escape OneNote. Thank you. I'll just share, um, share my screen with you here. Okay, so just check you can all see my screen. Uh, you can just see me, I think. Oh right. yes, I'll move. don't worry, I'll move. <laughs> move on from that. Okay, so basically, um, my name's Gillian Auld and I'm um, in not so sunny Northern Ireland at the moment. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through using OneNote as an escape room. Now, escape rooms that you may have um, heard of before have been the, um, the escape rooms that are actual rooms that you have to break a code to move into another, another room. Um, with OneNote, it's a virtual escape room. So you basically have to crack the code um, so each um, challenge will have a code that you have to find and you use the code then to work your way through the, um, the challenge room. So what I'm going to do for you today is I'm going to show you, first of all, an example of um, one of the OneNote escape rooms. And then I'm going to show you how you can create your own and how you can share it. OK, so as I said, if there's um, questions you go along, please do just shout out. Um, also, there's a um, because we're we're quite short on time. I'm only really going to um, get you to do the first of the activities. Um, so please do when we come to it, shout out the answers for it um, as we're coming through. So basically, when it comes to it, um, we have um, everything sort of lives. I call it the waffle, um, but everything lives here in your Office 365. So. It is within OneNote itself. So if I click on OneNote, I'll have a list of all the various OneNotes that I have created. Now, the one I'm going to look at, first of all, to show you as an example, is the one called Escape Challenge. And as you can see here, when it opens up, there is an introduction and then there are various um, challenges that you can, can set for it. Now, the important thing when you have a OneNote Escape Room is that you make sure that the first page, which is your introduction, um, has the code to the next room. So when they open it up, it will open up for them on that introduction and they then look at what the code is for the escape. So it's telling you here to get into challenge one, simply click on the section and type the word below all in lowercase. So we find out that the first code is the word escape. So if I click on challenge one, this is the way that it comes up. So it comes up with a password protected section and you have to click on it and enter the password to actually get the content of what it is. So we heard that it was escape. So, so I'll put the word escape in and then okay. And then it generates the content for it. Now I teach business and I was trying to think of something that was nice and generic. So I thought a little bit about branding and slogans. And I thought here about um, the old chocolate slogans. So this is um, little um, sort of ideas for, for different things. It was the old advertising and then you had to put the answer into the, the highlighted boxes. Once the, um, you had put the answers in, you would use the highlighted yellow um, letters to spell out a code into the second room. So if we start with the first one, um, please do shout out what you think this is. So if we had the, the slogan, how do you eat yours? What did you think that was? I thought cream egg, but that doesn't fit. It does. It does fit. Ah, okay. Ooh. Okay. So our first one is cream. Do nice capitals there. And our first one is cream egg. Okay, it's very good. Well done. I put the other one in already because it was quite long. So it was not cherry. It's not Terry's. It's mine. It was chocolate orange. What about it's not for girls? Not, this is the one that will show your age. It's not very politically correct now. 
Anybody, any ideas with that one? No one else is guessing. I'm going for New York. Yeah. York, very good. Whenever I, repeat, whenever I don't shave, I always say this is my Yorkie man look. <laughs> <laughs> what about this one? Get some nuts. This is something that, it was a bar that changed its name. In my day, it was called Marathon. See, I was going to say Marathon. Oh. Yeah, it's now called something else. What's a Marathon bar called now? Sneakers. Yeah, <laughs> okay. okay, what about this one? The Taste of Paradise. Bounty. 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 Okay, and all because the lady loves milk tray. Milk tray, very good. Okay, the crumbliest milk chocolate in the world. Flake. Crumbliest, flakiest milk chocolate in the world, I believe, the flake. Yeah, very good, it's flake. Is anyone else feeling hungry now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Getting your coffee break time, isn't it? <laughs> um, what about this one? Only these have the answer. Marty's. Marty's. Marty's, very good. Okay, and finally this one. Now, a few people, um, when I did this before, a few people got this one wrong. Um, so it's not crunchy. So it's soft on the outside, crunchy on the inside. Toffee crisps? No, that's not going to fit. No. Shall I, shall I give it away? Malteser? No. We'll start it off. Dime bar. Dime bar. Very good. Okay, so we have um, our first challenge now. You can see that I actually typed into that, um, into the OneNote. Um, when it comes to students, we don't allow them to edit it, so we would tend to have worksheets for them that they can actually use on the worksheet so that they can fill their answers in. But if I now, um, it tells you at the bottom here, so it says to get to challenge two, simply click on the section and type in the code above, all in lowercase. So when we look at the yellow letters, it spells out chocolate. So if you weren't hungry before, you definitely are now, okay? So if I click on now my challenge two and click to enter it, I put in that code. So it was, the code was chocolate. And that opens for me the next section. Now you'll be very glad that um, I cheated ahead of time for you and I didn't make you all do this one. But this one was just to show you an example of some of the things that you could do as a challenge room. So this one was a Sudoku and um, they had to fill in the um, Sudoku. And once it was done, there was a little bit of an explanation of, as to how they did it. And then once they had it done, they had to use the highlighted letters which became the code for challenge three, okay? So our code is 63961. So if I click on challenge three and enter it, it is 63961. And the reason I also did this one as well was to show you um, that when you're setting your codes, your codes can be words or numbers. It doesn't matter what you, what you actually put in with this, okay? So, this one here again, this was business related. So this was um, where I've actually filled in already for you because I just wanted to tell you about it. This is where I put um, a series of anagrams in and then I gave them a clue to what the anagram was. So for example, the first one and um, the anagram was flash cow and the clue was the inflows and outflows of cash within the business. And then obviously this was cash flow was the answer, okay? And we worked our way through it. And um, there's actually lots of online um, resources for creating your own anagram. So um, you can, um, there's actually ones for anagram solvers as well. So if you're, if you're being very good, you can show people how to access that. But that is an example of some of the things that you can actually do on it. Now the, um, the lovely thing as well about, because this is through OneNote, you can really basically put any format into this. So if you wanted, somebody had said they were performing arts, um, you could literally put a video in 
and um, or you could put a recording in and you could then ask them a question about the video um, and then they have to put their answer in. Um, if you're working in, say, for example, um, you know, numeracy or literacy, um, you can put it in and then get them to solve the, um, the problem. And the lovely thing about it is that um, it doesn't actually, um, you know, if you're putting the code in, it doesn't lock you out. So you can put the answer in as many times as you want until you get the right answer. So if there's something that's maybe, if you're working with a group that maybe has additional needs, um, you can actually put, um, you know, clues as to is it A, B or C, and then they can work their way through it. They can try it and see how it works. So it's good for differentiation working as well. So this little anagram one that we had here, um, the letters that were in here that were spelled out, spells out the word confidence. So when I'm going on to my correct the code section here then, and entering it, I then put the word confidence in, and it opens up my final crack the code. So this is letting them know that, um, that they have cracked that code. And on that one there, there's a few sort of um, ideas as to why you sort of would, would create one in the first place. So it's very adaptable to any subject area. Um, what I find is it's very good for creating that little bit of challenge in a group because you can um, even get teams working on it. So you could get um, a group trying to crack the code um, and getting them talking to each other and trying to get them to, to beat the other teams basically and, and complete it quicker. Okay, so it's very, very user friendly. Um, also, because it's on the cloud, um, nothing ever gets lost. So um, at any stage, I can just exit out of it. Okay, and it will always remain then in my, um, I can be find it again in OneNotes. Okay, um, if you've created ones that you want to get rid of, um, those are stored in your OneDrive. So your OneDrive is basically your big filing cabinet that everything goes into. So you can go and sort your OneNotes out. Um, within OneDrive as well, if you've created a OneNote, you can also um, share it or copy it or change it and move it around for, for different groups, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna exit out of that. I'm gonna show you now how you actually create a, um, a OneNote, how quick and easy it is to actually do it, okay? Now, the only thing with the OneNote is um, with the escape rooms, you need the two versions of OneNote. So you need the um, the one version that can be found um, in the Office 365, which is the, the web version, so to speak. And then you also need the desktop version to set your codes. So I'll show you how to actually do that and then how to share it. So initially, if we go in, I'm going to just create a new one. So I'm going to go into my waffle, go into my OneNote, and I'm going to create a new notebook. So I'm going to call this one um, today, just going to call it Tuesday quiz and create it. Now, when it's created, there's there's basically nothing in it. It's um, completely um, empty, ready for you to start creating your sections. So the first thing that you have to do, you have to create an introduction. And the reason you have to create an introduction is because the first page should always be unlocked. So basically in this section here, this is the um, section that you tell people what they are doing and put the first code in. Okay, so you'll give them that. So you'll have an introduction that has the, um, the introduction. So welcome to this, um, this OneNote. Um, and this is what you're going to be doing today. This is what your challenge is. And then um, they'll, they'll give you the first code. So I'm just going to use the um, a code. I'm just going to use the escape code again. So for this one here, I then go down and I create a new section. Now it's up to you what you call it. So you could call it, um, you know, task one. Um, you could call it challenge one. Or you could call it question one. It's totally, it's totally up to you what you actually want to call it. Okay. And then you just press okay. So first one I'm going to say question one. And I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to put an activity in. So as I say, I can put any activity I want in. I could put a video in. I could put um, a, a little sort of table like I did with the little highlighted sections. Um, I could even put, um, if there's a, say you've got a, a math problem or a, an English question, say you have a bit of, um, you know, maybe a bit of diction that you wanted to put in and you want people to look at things for it. 
Um, it's basically whatever you want you can put into that first one. So this one is the, this is the first one. Okay, I then keep adding sections. So if you've called it, um, you know, if you've kept it as question, um, keep the others as question as well so that they can know that they can work their way through it. So this one here is question two, okay? And, okay. and again, remember one note, you can put anything in. So you can put any pictures in, you can put video, you can put links, you can put whatever you like in. So I'm just gonna add one more section. Okay, so this is question three. I'm going to say, okay, and then finally you have to have a section that is crack code, okay, and this sort of section is, okay. okay. Um, one other thing that I would advise you to do as well is I would put an extra section in and call it teacher only. Okay, and the reason you should put a teacher only section into it is because once you have set the codes, you cannot unset them. So if you have put the codes in for a particular quiz and then you've forgotten what those answers are, um, basically it's going to be blocked to you as well. Okay, so always keep a little teacher only section in and this is put um, where you put your answers in. So I'm actually just going to put... Um, just that um, have each of them, whatever each of them are. So I'm going to have the first, first three just being escape is the word, okay? And all the work case, so I'll know that they're, they're in there, okay? So question one, these are the answers to get into each one, okay? So now what I can do is I can actually just X out of this. So I'm just gonna close this down, okay? And this is where you have to swap to the other version of OneNote. So if you go down to your Windows button at the bottom and come down to OneNote, okay? So see that there, the little icon there? Um, again, it can be OneNote or it can be OneNote 2016, whichever you have on your computer. Um, the desktop version has um, many more sort of um, options for you with OneNote if you're used to using OneNote. So it can allow you to add templates and different things like this as well. But the only difference between this version and the other version in the look is that instead of um, it being um, your, your things being down the left hand side, your sections are along the top. So I'm going to open the one that I just created. So I'm going to open and the one I called was Tuesday quiz. So I'm going to open that one. So there's a little quiz that, um, that I created earlier. So I had my questions and I have my introduction. So I'm just going to move my introduction to the start. Um, and these are the different sections. Now, your first introduction section, you definitely don't want to code on it because you want it to be open so that they can start using it right away. So I'm going to click on question two. And what you do is you right click on it and you come down to password protect this section. And you set a password. So I'm going to set a password. So I said that my passwords were just going to be escape. And you confirm it. Now here, what you're doing here is, it's saying here caution, because if you lose or forget the password, it's not able to recover it for you. So whatever you do, make sure that you have a note of what those um, those codes are, so that um, so that you, you can get into each yourself, because it'd be awful if you were locked out yourself, okay? And just press okay. Now, you work your way through each of the pages, right clicking them and password protecting them. So set the password and again, just escape. And again, these passwords can be as long or as short as you want them to be. Okay. And password protect, set password. Okay. And the thing to remember is that the crack the code section, remember this will have the answer from question three. So you have to password protect the crack the code. So again, password protect it. Okay, and then the teacher only section, I would have um, a very well-known um, password um, that you use all the time. 
um, that you can um, have for every single one note. So again, I'm going to password protect that. I'm going to set my password. I'm actually just going to call this one my name. Okay. And again, the reason you have to have that teacher section is so that you can put the codes in it so that you have it yourself that, that you can work with it. Now, I have done that and um, I've set all of the passwords. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lock them. So I just click on lock all. And now this OneNote is now password protected. So I can X out of this and I can go back in to my, just going up out of that. I can go back in to my um, my OneNotes and I can test it out to see how it's actually working. So if I click on my OneNote again, I have the Tuesday quiz that I've just set and I can just test it out to check that it's actually working and working through. So when I click on question one, um, I just set the same password for them all. So I just put escape, okay? And you can check then that it is opening everything for you and work your way through it. So that that is how simple it is to, um, to actually set it up and to have it working. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the, um, the escape challenge that I had already set up with the content in it. And I'm going to show you then how you actually share that with people. So when you open your, um, your escape challenge up, um, you have on the right hand side a button saying share. So if I click on share, I have various options that I can work with. So if I click on the top one there, which is um, specific people, if I want, I can email it to um, specific people. So if I chose specific people and apply it, I could put in their email addresses and that would then give them, um, okay, that would then give that particular person, once I send it, the link to actually start that, okay? And you can put as many people as you want in. But what I tend to do with it is I instead change it to anyone with the link and um, that means then that once they have the link, they can access that one note and then they have that one note to use. Now, this is the important bit. Always unclick this. So always take out the allow editing because you don't want um, anybody to, um, to be able to edit that form. So while I was showing it, I was able to type into it. Instead, with students, you would prefer if they use a worksheet or something, um, a separate sheet that they can actually type their answers into. So what I would tend to do is I would tend to use Class Notebook and um, in the, um, the content library, I would put a worksheet that they can actually take off and use and, and so they can fill in the answers themselves. So click on any one of the link, take that box off for allow editing and then apply it. And then um, it's asking me, because I've shared this before, it's asking me, do I want to update it or do I want the same? So because I've already shared it with people who obviously still want to have access to it, I'm going to go with use the existing. And it now has the little link. So if I click on this, it has the link. OK, and I can now um, copy that link to anybody and anybody can go on and start using it. OK, so it's it's very simple to sort of share that then for sharing. OK, now I just want to go down to the bottom here and show you the little bit at the bottom here for tips. And um, so what I'm saying to you is when you're doing it, make sure that your students use a response sheet for their answers. And um, it's a good thing to sort of have them. I would tend to put them up onto the content library of a class notebook um, and then I um, allow them to, to work their way through to work through their, their answers doing it. Um, plan it out so that you know that everything's going to fall you know, well for your activities that you're working through. You can, if you want, record the times. So you can say to people, right, OK, we're going to set the challenge. We're going to set a timer and um, we're going to see how long it takes you to actually work through it and to finish it. And um, that little bit about sweep the classroom, that's if you've had any sort of um, physical copies of a response sheet. Um, that's so that you can make sure you lift them so that any other groups coming in can't already get the, the help with it. You can have a theme or a storyline, so you could bring a video in. You could bring um, anything that sort of gets them working through. So they, um, it's almost like a, um, you know, like a chain of events that they go through. If you do this, what happens then when this happens? So you can work through that way. You could have puzzles or games. Um, this little thing is very good. Always test your, um, your challenge room with somebody else um, just to check and see if you've made any errors. 
um, or and just to check basically that everything works. Um, keep a note of your, co your code. So again, I would do that in a little teacher section. And I would also say to them to use hint cards. So say you have um, a, a group that has additional needs, you could maybe give them um, some extra little hint cards that um, that help them along. So maybe, for example, say it was the um, you know the the anagrams. You could maybe give them the start of a word or give them some information to sort of help them. And really, just basically think outside the box. You know, it's because it's one note. It has so many um, options that you can actually work with this. Um, so many ways that you can actually um, try new things. And it's just a simple case of, um, you know, as a bit of a recap, it's a simple case of set it up in the in the waffle and, um, you know, set it up in the waffle in OneNote, but also um, share it through OneNote, create your material. The only time you have to go into the, um, the desktop version is when you're actually setting your code. So you could have it, you know, spend a lot of time when you're sort of getting your OneNote set up and then just go in to set the codes up in the desktop version. Not every computer will have a desktop version, so you may have to go into your, your college or your school um, to, to have that desktop version. So it means that you can have it all done in advance of the time. OK, so that is in a nutshell is OneNote escape rooms. So um, are there any questions that you would have? That was great, Gillian. Thanks very much. Um, we did have one question come on from Jason, which Nadar has come in uh, saying, as any indication how well it works with phones and tablets. Uh, Nadar's saying that he's used it before and it worked quite well. Do you find that phones, tablets works just as well as PCs? Just exact, exactly the same. It's, um, it's just as good on phones and tablets. So especially with a lot of students working at home now, I'll actually stop sharing. So you've got the main screen there. Um, they, um, you know, it works extremely well with the, um, you know, with mobile phones that you're working through because a lot of students don't have access to computers um, if they're at home, but they always usually have a mobile phone, so they can do it just as easy on their mobile phone. Um, so it's it's very very good for them. So in terms of tracking to know that a particular student or group has done it, do you have to watch them in real time, or is there any way you can actually see who has completed it, who's got to the end, or? I get them to put it into, we, we would use Class Notebook a lot. So um, the students would have their um, their collaborative space and then they would have their, um, you know, their personal folder. So we get them to put the answers in. So we can keep track of them as they're going along. So as they crack a code, they put the code in. So it means we can keep keeping a wee eye just to check they're moving along and to check that they're not stuck in something. Um, so it means that if a group, particular group is taken or a particular student is taking a little bit too long, for a particular um, challenge, we can maybe send them a few hints. Okay, excellent. I can see that Ned, Nadar, you've raised your hand there. Would yes, hi. Uh, thanks very much, Gillian. Uh, really good ideas, and um, my mind is going at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> I started using OneNote before Teams came along, and I was doing yeah. stuff, but now I tend to use Teams all the time, and I do these in the collaboration area, break my students into groups so they can work in real time, and I can see what they're doing as they're doing it. And I find it much better than doing it just on OneNote. However, I've got stuff, I've got OneNote from previous uh, works, uh, so I cannot add them. Uh, but what I do now is uh, I get the link for that OneNote and I add it as an external tab to my one team. So I still well, have you, access. To you that can OneNote. actually add that to your team. See if you yeah. if you go onto your teams yeah. and at the top um, you have a plus symbol. Yes, that's if what you I do. Plus symbol and then just go to website. I um, added an external tab, yeah. Yeah, so and my just old one note is in point. Yeah. Yeah, and just and just put it that way because that's what I would do as well because I, I don't like the class notebook that then you know within Teams I prefer linking my old one. Yes, that's why I had it as an external tab. Uh, yeah. I still use the Teams one note, but I prefer the one note platform itself. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. I can see Kenji's raising his hand as well. Um, hi. Sorry, just a, a quick question around, I mean, I, I love the idea. I think as is potentially as an induction activity, especially yeah. at the start of term, introducing people into Teams OneNote, it, it, it's awesome and you could use it for other things. I was just wondering, is there any way that you could create like a timed activity to say, like, give this out to a class and say, you have to do this within 24 hours or, or, you know, Jason explodes or, or, or something. Um, 
I, I was trying to work out how you could set a timer attached and to it. And then set a timer into it to, to have that activity. But then, but then do you, you know, do you want it that they can't, you know, that there's a timer on it that you can't then, if, if they don't get it, get it completed within a certain time, does it sort of block them out totally? Yes, I, I, I just, yeah, because it's difficult to put, it? yeah, I was thinking possibly that you could set up like a, um, a, a quiz using Microsoft Forms and have, yes. and then only say like you have to put in the final code within 24 hours or the quiz closes or the quiz stops Ooh. or something. Just, just, <laughs> I, I like, I like the competitive element. It's just yeah. such. <laughs> I, I, I like your idea of the forms because you could, you could certainly do that. You could have a, where they, um, that's where they put their answers, they put the codes into the form. And then it means then that you've got, um, you know, evidence of who actually did it. So the names of the people who actually completed it and how I quickly completed it. The options for, for like having groups of people take on a challenge together, that, that seems, that just opens up the door so, to so many activities. It's just such a good idea. Yeah, collaboration, <laughs> collaboration yeah, space is perfect for that. Yeah, I think it's I think it's such a it sounds complicated. It sounds like it's a complicated thing to do, but it's actually, as you can see, you've seen today, it's actually very, very easy to set up. But because it's OneNote, um, it allows for all different formats to be put in. So it's just it's just wide open to what you could do with it. Okay. Wonderful. Well, everyone, we're about to finish the 30 minutes of the recorded session. So I will just wave goodbye to everyone on YouTube and ask them once again to smash that like button down below. Uh, thanks very much for joining the Virtual Bridge and hopefully see you at a future session.